So now we're going to look at the Commodore 64 version. Um, as you can see, nice and blue. <laughs> So we still have the same old futuristic font that we did last time in the Spectrum version and I'll just say that you'll get the same thing in the Amstrad version as well but uh, ignore what I just said there. So you've got the same old same old satellites however the orbit screen is just a little bit different. You'll notice that instead of a very crudely drawn Earth we're fighting on Neptune for some reason. Okay, we're fighting on Neptune. Maybe those ICBMs are really duff. So we'll go down. We've gone for the laser. The railgun. The heat-seeking slam missiles. Note that unlike the ZX Spectrum version, you don't actually get a sense of depth. It's just a spot going up and then going diagonal instead of a nice thick spot which then gets smaller as it does the diagonal path. You might want to be careful with the X-ray satellite though because instead of pushing fire to activate it and then pushing fire again to release it, you push fire and yeah you push fire to activate it and it actually triggers it as well, sets it off. Bugger. I didn't show you what the space plane looked like before because it's basically just an amalgam of free. So here it is. Of course, because you want the X-ray laser to target the MERVs, the ones that on the right hand side of the screen will come up in that yellow section. You've got to wait for a long time. Finally, go! And the Mervs that you hit go red. Very nice. And finally, the ground-based defence thing. You might want to cover your ears for this one. Okay, so after that ear bleaching, let's go on to the next part. Actually playing the game and just checking out any minor differences that there are compared to the ZX Spectrum version. Your reconnaissance screen doesn't look very different. The research and development screen does look different because instead of a cursor, you've now actually got the capital building. And whenever you want to pick up cash, you have to go to the far left to pick up the cash. And to get manpower, you need to go to the far right hand side to pick up the manpower before you actually go to the separate little sections and dropping them down. So it's a little bit more graphically advanced compared to the ZX Spectrum version. But other than that, everything's just the same. You'll notice that unlike the Spectrum version, when time stops, the satellites stop as well. On the Spectrum version, they just kept moving over that ground map. Whether it's to give a sense of time stopping or whether it's just a hardware issue, I don't know. 
So the fret screen. That's what the fret screen looks like. The president is just as annoying as ever, with a slightly different screen. And a little diddle 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 as you move the cursor. Again, it pays to not ignore the president. Here's the code box. Very nice. So what happens when things get a little bit for the worse? Well, obviously you want to arm the system. for when you want to disarm the system. because this is the easy mode, you get a preliminary warning of when NATO is under attack. So let's see how NATO performs in this little scenario I've done on the Commodore 64. <laughs> 